The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Feeling low. Feeling tense. These eight words are common sense. Smoke a lucky. The thing you have a best. Smoke a lucky. The thing you have a best. Millions of smokers are learning that Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense. That's what fine tobacco can do for you. And LSMFT, LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, puff by puff, pack by pack, you'll really enjoy this fine, light, naturally mild Lucky Strike tobacco. And you'll agree that Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco Lucky Strike and get on the lucky level where you feel and do your level best. Yes, smoke a Lucky to feel your level best. <laughs> The Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, the sportsman, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for 16 years, I've been introducing the star of our show, and after all those years, you'd think I'd run out of things to say about him. Well, I have. So here he is, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, Don, that wasn't a very nice introduction. Well, I'm sorry, Jack, but after 16 years, I just couldn't think of anything new. Oh, you couldn't, eh? Well, Don, I'm sure that if I were introducing you, I wouldn't have that trouble. Oh, yes, you would, Jack. You've been saying the same things about me for years. Why, well, I'll bet you can't say anything that I haven't heard before. Oh, yes, I can, Don. What? You're fired. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we'll proceed... Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, Jack. You're not serious, are you? Well... You can't fire me. After all, I've got a wife and three chins to support. <laughs> Don, stop worrying. You've been with me for 16 years, and I hope you're with... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hello, Don. Hello, Mary. I'm sorry I'm late, Jack, but my car wouldn't start this morning, and I had to take the bus. Oh, that's all right, Well, Don. say, Mary, if your car ever gives you trouble again, why don't you call on me? I'll drive you down. You've seen my new car, haven't you? <laughs> yes, I have, Don, and on you it looks good. <laughs> it certainly does. By the way, Mary, I understand you called me on the phone yesterday. What did you want? Well, you always like to know when I get letters from my mother, and I got one yesterday. In fact, I brought it with me. Oh, a letter from your mother, eh? Uh-huh. Well, and what does the Ma Kettle of Plainfield have to say? <laughs> well, just a second, I'll read it to you. Okay. My darling daughter, Mary, as you'll notice from the stationery, I'm writing this from the Plainfield Hotel. The reason we're here is because three de days ago, we shut the house up and had it fumigated on account of the pests. We got rid of them, all except your Uncle Lou and Cousin Willie. <laughs> Well, it's about time. We really Your don't... Your mother wasn't, didn't start out very funny, <laughs> incidentally. Go ahead. <laughs> we really don't mind Willie, as he's very little bother. Mm -hmm. He spends all his time down in the basement with his printing press. He has to work night and day because his biggest, biggest competitor is the United States government. <laughs> Your mother writes them all right. You just can't <laughs> read them. <laughs> I was blaming the mother. <laughs> the mother at all. Go ahead, Mary. I'm sorry. Oh, there's more. Oh, well. well. <laughs> anyway, Mary, dear, I kind of like Willie because he's so sweet and thoughtful. Every Mother's Day, he gives me a $10 bill with my picture on it. <laughs> well, I guess I was right in the first place. <laughs> now for a paragraph or two about your sister, Babe. Ah, good. This is the part I like. <laughs> Since the warm weather is here, your sister, Babe, got herself one of those new French bathing suits. She tried it on yesterday, and I haven't seen so much a babe since the doctor said it's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> However, she, she's very happy with the suit. Next month, she's entering a swimming contest. A contest? Gee, I didn't even know that she could swim. Oh, sure, Jack. Babe's a regular mermaid. Well, I've noticed the resemblance, except the, the wrong half looks like a fish. <laughs> I'm 
funnier than your mother today. <laughs> Continue with the letter, Mary. Okay. Uh, Mary, dear, you'll be happy to know that Babe is also taking dancing lessons from Arthur Murray. Well. <laughs> she, she got a swell deal, too. He teaches her dancing, and she fixes his plumbing. I knew she could do it. You know, Mary, your mother writes some of the funniest letters, though, I've ever heard. Oh, right? she certainly does, Mary. They're loaded with laughs. Yeah, they're a scream. Oh, hello, Dennis. When did you come in? When they found out Mary's sister Babe was a girl. Oh, then you missed the start of the letter. Would you like me to read it to you? Oh, no, I'll hear it on tonight's rebroadcast. Oh, yes, yes. By the way, Dennis, you were off the program last week. Uh, was anything wrong? Oh, no, Mary. Mr. Benny gave me a week off so I could go away for a little vacation. I sure enjoyed myself. I went fishing on Lake Mead. Well, how was the fishing, Dennis? Oh, it was wonderful. Boy, was I lucky. What'd you catch? Four trout, three perch, five bass, and a high-button shoe. A high-button shoe? Yeah, but it was too small, so I had to throw it back. <laughs> oh, fine. He caught a shoe. You ought to see the hip boot that got away. <laughs> I wish I could get away and do a little fishing. That's one of my favorite sports. Fishing? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, what a thrill it is to hook a silvery rainbow trout, one of nature's loveliest creations. What a sight as it breaks the water in a shimmering shower of glistening drops and the sunlight reflecting on its iridescent beauty. Look how he describes the fish. Me, he can't see anything nice. <laughs> talking about? Nothing, nothing. <laughs> Say, Dennis, how long were you at Lake Mead? Oh, well, we were there for a whole week, and I spent all my time out on the boat. A whole week on a boat? A bass there, you landlubber. Lobber the starboard and drop the anchor. Look, Dennis. Give him a timbers and man the pumps and we'll all drown like rats. Dennis, that's enough. Ahoy, me hearties, batting the barton and pooping down the poop deck. <laughs> to Durston and Osborne. <laughs> now, Dennis, that's enough. Do you hear? So that talk, Mr. Christian, or I'll swing you from the highest yard arm of the British fleet. Oh, for <laughs> Mary, see what you can do with them, will you? Dennis, Jack is right. Why don't you Let just... Let the men mutiny, my lass, and don't worry. The ship may be rocking and pitching, but I'll sail it through this hurricane or... 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 Dennis, what's the matter? I'm seasick. <laughs> Good, good. Now look, Popeye, it's time for your song. What are you going to sing? Careless Hands. Okay, let's have it. Aye, aye, sir.
Dennis Hand, sung by Dennis Day. Very good, Dennis. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, we are going to do our version of that Warner Brothers picture, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre. And I better cast it right now. I, of course, will play the leading role. Of, of course. course. Certainly. <laughs> Listen, I'll give a performance that'll sit... Okay, sim- folks, you're all in clover because Harris is here and this lull is over. <laughs> so lay it on me. Yes, lay it right on me. Oh, yes. Phil, Phil, why do you always have to come in here and ask the audience to applaud? Well, I ain't going to get no laughs with the jokes you give me and I want to hear some kind of noise. <laughs> Well, you've got no right to complain about the jokes. You get as many laughs on this program as I do. That's what I mean. I want to hear some kind of noise. Applaud me, folks. Phil! All right, all right. I'll read the stuff that's written here, but I thought a little ad-libbing would liven things. Hi, you live. <laughs> Hello, Phil. How are Alice and the children? Oh, fine, Liv, fine. Just left them. You know, this being the first day of May, I drove them over to the park for a big May party. A May party? Yeah, you should have seen all them kids. They looked so cute as they danced around me. Dance around you? Didn't they have a maypole? Yeah, but I was prettier. <laughs> Let me sit down with you, Dennis. I'm seasick, too. <laughs> Phil, you should have seen Mary's letter from her mother. Nice, huh? Yeah, she wrote the letter stuttering. She wrote it that way. <laughs> But look at Phil, you know, between you and Remley, I've never Wait seen Wait a minute, you... Jackson, hold it, Dad. What? Just a minute, bud. I don't care what you say about me, but don't pick on Remley. Phil, Phil, calm down. Yeah, what's wrong? Well, I may as well tell you why I've always tried to protect Remley. <laughs> what? Well, you see, well, I promised Frankie's poor old mother that I'd always look after him. Oh, when was that? When she throw him out of the house. <laughs> hmm. And I don't like to brag, Jackson, but I've taken pretty good care of Frankie during all these years. Uh, by the way, Phil, it's none of my business, but how much do you pay Frankie? Well, I, I don't give him no regular salary. I, uh, I just take care of his needs, like room, board, and bail. <laughs> Oh, fine. Say, Jackson, before I go, there was something I wanted to ask you. Oh, yeah, look, last week you told me you were going to buy a new car. What kind did you get? I didn't get any, Phil, but I may get a new one this summer. Well, look, be sure you get one of them new models that comes equipped with the Dynaflex Superflowing Unijet Turbo Vasculator, which is synchro meshed with the multi-coil hydro-tension duo vacuum Dynomotor. <laughs> Come in the modern and fodder modern. <laughs> well, listen. <laughs> well, outside of that last word, listen. That was amazing. I mean, how'd you ever say that? A Harvard man fixes my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta be leaving. So long, kids. So long, oh, Phil. Phil. Hey, folks, I'm leaving. You wanna throw just one more on me? Phil, get out of here! Oh, boy, what a character. You know, Jack, Phil is conceited. Conceited? Mary, you should have heard the things he told me yesterday while I was giving him a Tony. (laughs) (laughs) Now, where were we? Well, you were casting the play we're going to do. Oh, yes, the treasure of the Sierra Madre. Now, Don, you're going to be my partner when we go hunting for gold. And, Dennis, you're going to be the old prospector, the part that was played by Walter Houston. And let's see, uh, where's Mel Blank? Here I am, Jack. Folks, it's Mel Blank. Give him a big hand. Jack, we're all going to be in the play. Why don't you just give him applause? Well, Mary, I have to. It's in his contract. You, know? you mean you give money and applause, too? No money, just applause. <laughs> Amazing, you know, how much you can save when you got a lot of hams working for you. <laughs> now, Mel, you're going to be the leader of the Mexican bandits. And, oh, yes, Dennis, besides being the old prospector, you'll come in later as one of the bandits. Gee, two parts. It's hard to believe I can sing, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, for our version of Warner Brothers' thrilling adventure story, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre. <laughs> As 
our scene opens, it's a hot, humid, sultry day, and a lonely, hungry, penniless American is roaming the streets of Tampico, Mexico. Walking. Walking. That's all I've been doing for two whole days. Just walking. No place to sleep. Nothing to eat. Nothing to drink. Well, I'll see what I can do in this saloon. Gee, this place is crowded. Hey, bartender. Bartender. Uh, si, senor. What will you have? Give me three fingers. Uh, three fingers of what? Just three fingers. I'm hungry. <laughs> Give me three fingers of anything. If I don't get something to eat pretty soon, I'll go crazy. Hi, uh, big boy. Huh? It's good to see an American down here, even though you do need a shave and your clothes are torn. You look like a derelict. What's the matter? It's a long story. I used to be a famous radio comedian. I had a big house, a swimming pool, and everything. And all of a sudden, I'm a bum. What happened? Television. <laughs> Television? What's that? I don't know, but the wrestlers have all the good writers now. <laughs> anyway, let's not talk about me. What's a girl like you doing way down here in Mexico? I work in the Tampico branch of the May Company. <laughs> they have a branch in Mexico? Yeah, I'm in the Jose department. <laughs> That's better than your mother's letter. <laughs> well, look, sister. How about you and hey, me? Hey, Bogey. Bogey, I've been looking all over town for you. Who's your friend? That's my partner, Curtin. Sam Curtin. He and I came down here looking for gold. Yeah, gold. Every time I think of it, I go crazy. Gold! Gold! I can see it now. There it is. There it is. It's mine! It's mine! Gold! Gold! Put that back. That's my pivot tool. <laughs> No, sister, he goes crazy every time he thinks of gold. Well, doesn't gold mean anything to you? Yeah, I can take it or love it. I mean, leave it. Well, if you boys are interested in looking for gold, there's an old prospect around here who knows every foot of the Sierra Madre. If you can get him to go with you, you'll strike it rich. Where does the old prospector live? Well, you can't miss it. You go right down Flamingo Road. Flamingo Road, Flamingo Road, Flamingo Road. Are you stuttering? No, but I promised Warner Brothers I'd mention it three times. <laughs> Come on, Curtin. Let's go. Hey, Curtin, this must be the house where the old prospector lives. Yeah, knock on the door. Okay. Howdy, bub. <laughs> Hello, old timer. My name is Humphrey Bogey. What's yours? Titus Houston. Yeah, well, we heard that you know all about the gold and the Sierra Madre, and we thought maybe you'd come up into the mountains with us. Sorry, son, but I'm too old for that now. There was a time when I used to go up into them hills and stay for months and months at a time. Uh -huh. Then it would get me. I was only human, you know. I'd have to come back, be back in town with a load of gold, and in a couple of nights, I'd blow it all in. Women, eh? No, Kleenex. I got hay fever. <laughs> Well, look, old-timer, if you won't go with us, maybe you can tell us where we can find the gold. Sure. Here's a map of old Mexico. See? You can't go wrong. You take the main road through Tampico till you pass El Paso. After you pass El Paso, you go through El Thruo and turn left at El Lefto. What if we turn El Rido? That's El Rongo. <laughs> oh, is that where the gold is? Nope. That's where you buy your burrows. Burrows? Yep. There's a place right on the corner. Madman Hernandez. <laughs> He'll sell them to us? Yep, but you'll have to carry an awful lot of water for them. Why? Hernandez wanted his burrows to look like Buicks, so he cut holes in their sides. <laughs> oh, well, we gotta be getting along, old-timer. You sure you don't want to come with us? Nope, but I'll see you later. You will? Yep, I come back on page 12 as a Mexican bandit. <laughs> oh. 
Well, come on, Curtain. Let's go. What's the matter, Bogey? You look unhappy. Well, why shouldn't I be? We've got the map. We know where the gold is, but we can't get it because we don't have any money to buy equipment. Well, senor, senor. Huh? In there, in the saloon, there is a telephone call for you. In there, for you. In the saloon. In there. Huh? For you. For me? In there. Is it an important call? <laughs> Gee, an important call. For you. A telephone call for me. Who could it be? I'm 2,000 miles away from home. Well, I might as well find out. Come on, Curtain. Wait for me at the bar, Curtain. I'll answer the phone. Okay. Hello? Yeah, speaking. Huh? Sure I can answer that. The Pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock in 1620. Thank you. Goodbye. Hey, Curtain! Curtain. What's up, Bogey? We got the burrows, the picks, the shovels, the sleeping bags, and a refrigerator. Where'd you get them? That phone call. I just won them on a quiz program. <laughs> Tacos or leave it. <laughs> Good. Now let's go and find that gold. All right, before we go, I want to buy drinks for the house. Okay, everybody. The drinks are on me. Come on, everybody, up to the bar. Hey, Bogey, those four Mexicans just came in a-waving at you. Where? Oh, yes. Buenos dias, amigos. Mm. Come on, boys, I'll pay for it. Let's have a song. Tampico, Tampico, on the Gulf of Mexico. Tampico, Tampico, that's the place where you should go. Feeling low, feeling tense. These eight words make common sense. Smoke a lucky like the rest. sacks of gold. Yeah, ten more sacks and then we... Wait a minute. Look, coming up the trail. Mexican bandit. Curtain, quick, take out your gun. But I haven't got a gun. What? What did you say, Curtain? I haven't got a gun. Ah, that's ridiculous. Who ever heard of a curtain without a rod? <laughs> Thank you. Hey, that was pretty... Shh, shh. Quiet, quiet. Here they come now. Oh, yeah. Look, Curtin, they're getting off their horses. They're walking this way. Well, we'll just have to try and bluff them. Hey, you. Come here. Are you a Mexican bandit? Si. I suppose your men are tough. Si. I guess they would kill us at a drop of a hat. Si. What's your name? Si. <laughs> Si? Si. <laughs> now look, see. I mean, Si. We don't have anything you want. We're, we're hunters. That's all we are. You do not fool me. You have some gold and we want it. If you don't give it to us, we will kill you. I think. <laughs> look, me and my partner have been out in these mountains for three months. Yeah, we found Gold? But don't take all of it. Let us keep half. That's a fair proposition, isn't it? We'll give you a half. I will talk it over with my lieutenant. Oh, Henry. Henry Sierra. Coming, madre. <laughs> what is it then, Capitan? The gentleman here with the golem made a proposition. Oh, see? Si. What is it? Estas personas dicen que si no los matamos, ellos nos darán la mitad de del oro. Si los matamos, tendríamos que cagar con todo. Por lo tanto, con ya usted el oro y matarlos después. What did he say? What did he say? He said, you better give us the gold because these eight guns make common sense. <laughs> what? When these guns are smoking, you ain't lucky. <laughs> 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 
No, no, bandito. Please, don't shoot us. We'll give you the gold. El Capitan, if we take the gold, we will need a burro. Si, we will take the little burro. It is equipped with the Dyniflex Super Flowing Uni Jet Turbo Vasculator, which is synchromesh with the Multi Coil Hydro Tension Dual Vacuum Dynamometer, I think. Look, Pat, take our gold. Take our burros, but don't kill us. I will tell you what I do, senor. I give you a fighting chance. Here's a weapon for you and a weapon for me. What? You count to ten and may the best hombre win. All right. All right, I'll count to ten. One. Two, three. Ooh, not yet. <laughs> Four, five, six. Ooh, wait a minute. Seven, eight. Ooh, you're cheating. I think. <laughs> Nine, ten. You missed me. That's better. Ooh. Okay. Bogey, when he started shooting, why didn't you shoot back? I couldn't. He gave me a knife. <laughs> Goodbye, Curtin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your life, your property can be lost through fire. Don't let it happen in your home, in public places, or in the country. Be careful. Be on guard against fire. Prevent fires in your community. Thank you. Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first... Feeling low. Feeling tense. These hate words are common sense. Smoke a lucky To be your level best. Smoke a lucky To be your level best. To feel your level best. Smoke a lucky For it's a fact that Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense. It's important to know that fine tobacco can do this for you. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Light, ripe, naturally mild tobacco. No wonder more independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. So when you choose your cigarette, remember Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense. Put you on the right level to feel and do your level best. Yes, be sure to make your next carton of cigarettes Lucky Strike. Smoke a lucky to be your level best. Smoke a lucky to be your level best. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes another program, and we'll be with you again oh, next Jack. Sunday night. When we, huh? Jack. What? While you were doing the sketch, a wire came for you from Humphrey Bogart. From who? Humphrey Bogart. Not from Humphrey Bogart? <laughs> Mary, Jack. what's the matter with you today? A wire came to me from Humphrey Bogart? Yes. Well, read it to me. This wire you don't read, you twist it around your neck. <laughs> oh, 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 I see. Well, good night, folks. <laughs> Be sure to hear Dennis Day in a day in the life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned for the Amos and Andy Show, which follows immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.